Unsightly gaps can really distract on an otherwise good-looking model, so it's best to fill them in in the early prep stage. There's multiple products and techniques specifically for doing this, but for this video I'm going to focus on using green stuff. The model I'll be using is a Peacekeeper from Malifaux. I was dry fitting the pieces together. Oh, by the way, always dry fit your models. Especially if they're monopose like Malifaux models are. It makes it a lot easier to figure things out early on. Anyway, I noticed the back plate of my Robo Buddy was missing. I checked the box and the floor and I couldn't find it anywhere and determined it wasn't included in the package. Normally this wouldn't be a big deal and I just contact Weir's customer support as I've done whenever I've had an issue in the past, but I figured this could be used as a good learning opportunity for this video. Everything I'm about to go over could be applied to fill a gap between a Space Marine's arm and chest or an unsightly seam going through a larger model, so don't be worried about the model specifics. Obviously you'll need some green stuff, or need a tight epoxy putty as it's technically known as. You'll need something to sculpt the putty with. For what I'll be doing, an X-Acto knife will work fine, but I'll mostly be using actual sculpting tools during this video. Finally, while not necessary, I recommend keeping an empty base or piece of terrain in your work area, as measuring the appropriate amount of green stuff for your project is difficult, and any excess can be added to the base or terrain as additional details, rather than be thrown away. In this case, I have the Peacekeeper's base, which I plan on making into a desert landscape with some wooden beams, inlaid into the ground. Sometimes green stuff is packaged with two color strips touching each other. In cases like this, it might be necessary to remove the middle section where the two colors touch, as over time the chemical reaction between the two can cause those sections to harden. Be sure to take a lot of time when mixing your green stuff. It won't start setting for roughly an hour, so be sure to get a consistent green throughout before applying it anywhere. Once you're ready to apply it to your model, start by sticking a rough amount in whatever gap you're aiming to fill, and then remove or add extra until you get the rough shape you want. This doesn't have to be exact, but you generally want to fill up to the air's limits or slightly exceed it as you can cut off or sand down any excess green stuff once it's cured. With your rough shape filled, you'll want to flatten it out. There's tools specifically for this, but again, if you've only got an X-Acto knife, you should still be able to do this by using the flat side of your blade like a spatula and patting down the surface. Or you can use the handle of the blade like a rolling pin to roll out any lumps. Just be careful with the blade or remove it altogether when doing this. Now that you've got your shape, it's time to get rid of any blemishes in the green stuff, such as creases in the putty or any fingerprints you might have left behind. At this point, you'll want to use either water, Vaseline, or even saliva to wet your tools and gently rub these flaws out of the surface of the green stuff. This part requires a gentle hand and patience. If you push a little too hard and alter the shape of the green stuff, don't be upset. Just repeat what you did before and get back to polishing it. Once you've got a nice, immaculate surface, you might want to add some extra details into it. In this case, I want to create the crease through the middle of the plate to match the existing armor plates around it. Initially, I used a sculpting tool but found the blade was too wide and was pushing the mass of green stuff out of shape, so I instead opted to use my X-Acto blade since its surface area is essentially non-existent. To add the rim at the bottom, I rolled up a bit of green stuff into a noodle, sized up the distance on the model, and cut roughly the same shape. Again, it's better to have more material than less. Then I flattened it a little to get the most surface area to stick to the rest of the model, followed by rounding the edges into the existing rim. Now with it gripping the surfaces it'll stick to, I slowly shape it into the same general proportions as the rest of the rim, followed by a wet rub down to get the surface nice and smooth. Now that I'm done with the model and have some leftover green stuff, I apply the remainder of it to the base I prepared and flatten it out. Then I use a tool to carve odd shaped crack lines throughout the green stuff, and lastly carve into the edges to create some signs of erosion. Once I'm happy with the shape, I roll a compressed ball of foil to give the green stuff texture. You can also use an actual rock to imprint the texture, but that would require you having access to nature, and we all can't afford the high life that rock owners enjoy. Normally I'd leave this base for the next time I would have excess green stuff, but I want to get this done for this video, so consider this a secret basing tutorial within this tutorial. Once the green stuff is cured, I'll apply some watered down tacky glue and sprinkle modeling dirt about it, and then rub off the excess dirt once the glue is all dried. Back to the model. It's been over a day and the green stuff has fully cured. Since we had a slight bit of excess green stuff, we then filed down the surface to be in line with the rest of the model. In the case of the area between the two vents, I used a smaller metal file to get between them, and then used another flat metal file to smooth out the bottom of the rim. Finding it difficult to get between where the rim and plate meet with a file, I decided to use my X-Acto to cut away some of the excess plate, then sand the surface flat. Once I was done sanding, I used a brush to wet the area and wiped it down to remove the excess material from sanding. 
The last bit I considered doing was recreating the rivets found on the rest of the armor plates. I initially thought of using some plastic rods, but found they were too thick and would draw more attention to them for being the wrong size than if they weren't there at all. If I really wanted the rivets there, I would have used some green stuff to roll some extremely small balls, and then once they had cured, I would slice them in half and glue them into place. But I wasn't too concerned since this was on the back of the model, so most people wouldn't even notice unless you pointed it out. Done with this, I assembled the rest of the model and moved on to painting. It's some time later and the model is done. Aside from the rivets missing, it looks exactly as it's supposed to, so it's mission accomplished.